distance can't be stopped. And if 1% of 200 million, and that's what it's up to now, gun owners, resist, that's 2 million people. And so all someone well, has... I, yeah. I think uh, the time to be optimistic is when uh, a handful of cops beating up some hapless person are set upon by the large number of bystanders. And the cops are beat up or killed instead of the innocent person. I think when the people start responding to the police with force, they could very easily overcome the police simply because of disparity in numbers. When that starts happening, then we can say the people really have woken up and really have had enough. Like in Greece, the, co the people were throwing Molotov cocktails at the police. They were trying to kill them. And they started, they beat them too. That's, that's and, yeah. And so I think. But they haven't been drinking fluoride, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if, if the if the government tried to act like this, say, 100 years ago, what would have happened? Uh, it would have been short-lived government. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been on a steady well, diet. Of in the past, but usually they put them down uh, like the Whiskey Rebellion was put down with the army. So, you know, they they break all the rules and employ troops against the people when they feel they need to. So, I, I don't know. It's... It remains to be seen how bad things get. I think you've got to have people quite desperate uh, here before they actually take on the government. And, and, and they're not going to get that desperate suddenly. It's going to be a drawn-out process. Well, a lot of police I talk to are actually getting it now and uh, are criticizing the cases of like people like Thomas Kelly, who they tortured to death for fun. And uh, the, I've seen in Latin America when the police start beating somebody up, everybody runs in and attacks them. Uh, but again, they haven't been drinking fluoride, eating GMO, and, and you know, watching 10 hours of television a day. Thank you so much for talking to us, Dr. Roberts. It's great having you. Glad to be with you, Alex. Thank you, sir. We're going to come back and talk to uh, callers for a while. And then uh, coming up later, we got Congressman Jones joining us. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Some calls coming up. Uh, straight ahead, prisonplanet.tv. Don't forget, I'll be on television tonight, 7 o'clock, prisonplanet.tv, 15-day free trial right now. Attention all U.S. drivers. Do you own a vehicle? Congressman Walter Jones is coming up with the impeachment of Obama. Right now, let's go to Frank in New York. Frank, you're on the air. Welcome. Good afternoon, Alex. A most enjoyable uh, interview with... Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Roberts, Alex, uh, it, it's been a it's been a while since I've spoken to you. I guess about a year and a half, and I listen to you regularly. But uh, you have an amazing uh, uh, group of callers, so it's getting more and more difficult to you know get in touch with you. But uh, I wanted to say this: uh, I think now it's time for people to reread the Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn to at least understand what totalitarian oppression is in a contemporary setting. And also, I was, I'm was i very concerned about the recent statements regarding Russia and China, specifically Russia taking preemptive action uh, to remove the threat of the American missile shield in Poland and the Czech Republic. Oh, that's the thing, is the rhetoric is going off the chart to b above Cold War levels between China, Russia, and the United States. And y y you mentioned authoritarianism. A lot of good old boys are like, oh, that's fine, I don't mind if we have any rights. Authoritarianism is almost always hellishly poor. I mean, they ruin the economy. You, tyranny is not cute. I know Hollywood makes it look fun, but I'll assure you, ladies and gentlemen, it's not. They will gut this country. Uh, what are your other points? Well, I wanted to say this, Alex, that it destroys the spirit. And I don't just mean necessarily the soul or a religious spirit, but the geist or the spirit or the will within everyone. And it's a very demoralizing uh, experience. And the 20th century has taught us that in profound Ways. Well, that's why I say liberty or death, because I'm not going to be living in that world. I'm going to beat these people. We're going to beat them, or I'm going to die trying. Liberty or death. Victory or death. I have to say, Alex, your uh, documentaries are superb. I tried 
linking up with you in uh, in uh, September, September 11th, 2006, but you were quite busy, I guess, with the police and things in New York. But hopefully at some point we'll get together. And, uh, Frank, I recognize, I, your, I recognize your voice. You've, you've called over the years, well, I've got a decade or so. Thank you, Frank. George in Connecticut, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, yes, Alex. I'm wondering if you can get one of your talented people to make up a sign that we could use for the university students to get down to Bilderberger. May occupy Bilderberger. These are the people who gloated over uh, taking down our economy. And so in uh, what year? I forgot the, the original year and maybe some of the other elements. We could put have that up there somehow and then they could download it and, and print it out in every No, that's a great idea. I'm going to I'm going to tell my graphics folks to come up with whatever the standard, you know, printout sign size is, graphic or volunteers can do it and we'll post a Bilderberg coverage section ahead of time because it's getting close only a few weeks away now, like a week and a half, and uh, we're going to be there covering Bilderberg and be there in person for four days in Chantilly, Virginia. And yes, we need to get everybody out there with the signs. Like, you know, Bilderbergs, we, you know, we're on to you. We got your number. Bilderberg, uh, you, you know, you're the enemy. You're the threat. I mean, some simple slogan. We also need to all call the prostitute media and let them know that we're fully aware of the fact that they never cover this event. One other thing um, I was thinking, I saw these very cheap little plant, remote control uh, control planes like for twenty twenty five dollars. If we could all get those and fly it at them, and maybe get little tiny microphones, these micro microphones and micro uh, video cameras with also all right, audio. Now you're they talking. Could... Let me stop you. Uh, I'll just I'll just go ahead and let let this out. We are looking, and it, it's legal and lawful, uh, but it's just the fun of it at getting one of those four helicopter blade systems. Looks like a flying saucer. They're about $300. <laughs> it's got cameras on it. It's controlled by your iPad. And that way, when they're driving in, we'll have drones. <laughs> Citizen Drone Air Force. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and announce that. Everybody, bring your remote control drones. We're going to buzz David Rockefeller. <laughs> Well, they've tried to have a media blackout on it, but it's failed and he's getting more co-sponsors. It's clearly in the Constitution that it's illegal. And Congressman Walter Jones, currently serving the ninth term in Congress for North Carolina, uh, joins us. He has introduced legislation that if Obama launches another war, which he wants to put physical troops in, you know, back them up in Syria, that the impeachment proceedings will kick in. We've already seen it in Libya. Obama says he has UN authority. This is a short segment, long segment coming up, and then he's got to go to a vote. Congressman, tell us uh, about the bill, the progress, uh, and uh, why this bill is needed. Uh, and again, thank you for introducing it and standing up for the Constitution, and thank you for coming on the show today. Well, Alex, thank you very much. A couple of months you gave me a an opportunity to talk about HCON Resolution 107, and I really need your help. And and more important, I want the uh, listeners to your show to pick up the phone and call their members of Congress uh, and ask the members of Congress to uh, join in this effort to make sure that Congress meets its constitutional responsibility and not allow a president of the United States on their own decision to just bypass Congress and bomb a country, as you made reference to Libya, and you were exactly right. Uh, this bill right now, uh, and, and being on your show, I was on the LaRue show over the weekend, we're going to do as many shows as possible. We need the listeners to pick up the phone and call their member of Congress right there in the district office, whatever state they're in, and uh, say, we want my, I want my congressman to, to go on HCON Resolution 107, uh, and that's what we need to ha happen. We need a hearing, and I, I, we do have the ear of the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. His name is Lamar Smith from Texas. And we've had a lot of interest, thanks to you and others, from the state of Texas about this constitutional issue. Uh, so we would like to get a hearing sometime in July. And, Alex, the way this place works on any issue, you've got to get a hearing before the uh, committee moves it to the floor. And I think if we could get a hearing with two or three panels of experts on the Constitution, I think we could really convince Congress that we need to move this resolution forward. So being on your show is very special, and I appreciate oh, it so much. Oh, are you kidding, sir? We want to thank you for having the courage to bring forward this and to work with uh, 
Ron Paul's office, I know that his uh, his presidential campaign uh, advisor, constitutional scholar, uh, Bruce Fine, constitutional lawyer, helped uh, help draft it. It's absolutely constitutional. We're about to go to break and and come back and go over those areas. And then okay. if you've got phone numbers or who we should call, yep. we, who, uh, who specifically should we talk to? We've got phone numbers, and we'll share that in the next break. Amazing. We're about to go to break in about a minute. Um, uh, separately, uh, explain to people why it's unconstitutional for a president to launch a, a war without a congressional approval. Well, it's 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 pretty explicit in the Constitution, and we have bypassed this uh, for so long, going back to uh, the Korean War, and it's in Article Two, uh, Section Four of the Constitution, and. I, and, I, and Alex, I tell you, I was with the group in 1999, uh, a couple of Democrats, but mostly Republicans. We went to the federal courts uh, on President uh, uh, Clinton deciding to go into Kosovo and bomb Kosovo. Uh, the courts threw it back out because the courts always say, well, Congress has the authority to cut the budgets when you go to war. Well, we never do that. Then again, in uh, last year, uh, uh, Dennis Kucinich and I were the two leads and two Republicans, Ron Paul being one, and uh, two Democrats, so they made three Democrats, counting Dennis, and three Republicans, counting me, Walter Jones, with Jonathan Turley. We went to the courts again on Libya. We thought we had an excellent opportunity, legally speaking, and the courts kicked it out and said, no, you've got the authority to cut uh, cut the funding. And Congress will never cut the funding, and I'm not going to be critical, but when you've got kids over there giving their life for a country, you would hate to think, well, if I don't vote for this, they might not get the ammunition they need to, to defend themselves. But that's kind of like the chicken or the egg, because if you're sending them into a fraudulent war to begin with, in the whole war, you, you won't need the ammo. Stay right there, Congressman. We're going to come right back on the other side and break all this down and give out some phone numbers to try to uh, get this bill out there on the floor. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying. Representative Walter B. Jones, Congressman from North Carolina, is our guest, and he is the man who introduced the legislation to pass a law that simply enforces the Constitution that if Obama launches one more military operation and tells Congress openly, I don't need any authorization from you. Because since the police action of the Korean War, they don't call it a declaration of war, but still they get a congressional authorization and funding and Congress gives the go-ahead. And for those that don't know, the president isn't even the commander-in-chief until the war is declared. And then he's the executive. The Congress says, here's the money, here's the enemy, here's what you do. Now you go out and command them, George Washington, basically. Okay? That's what happens. Now it's just commander-in-chief and the Congress doesn't count and they operate like potted plants or a ceremonial vestigial uh, something of a bygone age. And we saw the spectacle. I'm going to play a video clip of this coming up. After the congressman speaks some, because he needs our help, and we need to help him, because we're all Americans in this together. And he's had the courage to do this uh, um, against these criminals, because it is criminal to launch a war without congressional approval. It's treason. But the point is, we saw the spectacle a few months ago of the Secretary of Defense and, and others saying, hey, we don't need you anymore. We have the UN authority. And Obama's letter saying, hey, I don't just do this on my own. He went one even further. We have the U.N. saying so. Unbelievable. Now, Representative Jones has introduced uh, a piece of legislation, and he's going to give you the number, everything about it, and he needs your help to get it rammed out of committee, okay, because they're trying to procedurally block it. You notice you're seeing a media blackout on this, so media across the country. You need to have Congressman Jones on, and, and, and people need to get, you know, when Ron Paul's on, ask him about this because Ron Paul's supporting it. And his uh, head policy advisor helped write this, uh, constitutional lawyer, Bruce Fine. Congressman, you've got the floor. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Uh, what are we facing right now, and, and how can we get the Constitution enforced? Alex, thank you for the, your comment.